Okay, so hello again class. For this recording, we're going to talk about effective learning competencies. Okay, so uh, when we talk about learning competencies in the effective domain, according to Navarro and Santos, these are basically um, specific, measurable, short-term, and observable student behaviors. Okay, so um, when we say specific, as I have mentioned in the previous recording, we're talking about objectives that have little in scope okay so they are not general um definitions such as the student must show resilience okay that is an example of a non-specific learning competency okay student must be resilient uh in solving fractions or in adding the similar fractions okay so your idea of being specific uh, when it comes to the cognitive learning competencies, ganun din yung pinaka-idea when we talk about being specific in the effective learning competencies. The next one is measurable. Okay, When we say measurable, it has to be something, it is um, a trait that can be restated into something that is quantifiable. For example, number one, the student tries at least three more times before moving on to another um, problem involving fractions. Okay, so that one is measurable. So how do you measure that? Okay, you get the scratch of your students. For example, show your solutions, whether they be wrong solutions or correct solutions. In that manner, you will see Sino yung mga estudyante na nag-strive and sino yung mga estudyante na isang beses, nag-gets na, isang beses, uh, sumuko na. Okay? And then, we talk about short term. Now, as I told you in our previous recording, yung characterization yung hindi natin madalas nilalagay as learning competencies because characterization is more on the long term. The consistency of a particular um, trait. So, in effective learning competencies, especially for lessons in high school or in college na usually mga one week lang yung haba, dapat ganun din yung haba ng iyong learning competency in the effective domain. Okay? So, uh, short term, meaning, get focus ka lang for a week, something that is easily seeable, something that is not exactly long-lasting, but can be a foundation for more long-term traits and behaviors. And the most important part here is that it should be observable behaviors. So, when, again, when we say observable, this is something that is visible, something that we can get evidences from. Okay, and of course, uh, something that is uh, somehow without bias kasi nakita mo siya. Okay, now they fully asserted that uh, this instructional objectives is the foundation for lessons that will be used to achieve the content standards. Okay, so ano po ibig sabihin na? Now, as I've told you last time, effective domain or the effective learning is both the ends and means of learning. So, um, when I say means, kasi we have to understand that students who perform well believe better in their capabilities, believe better in their capacity to learn in the classroom. Okay? So, alternatively, okay, pag may mga students ka na hindi maayos yung kanilang effective learning, chances are they will experience more difficulty when it comes to learning the actual content. Kaya nga sabi dito, ang mga effective objectives natin, okay, should not limit the spontaneity nor limit the vision for education that the teacher wants to inform in the classroom. So, what does that mean? Okay, meron po kasi tayong mga tricks in the classroom that can arise from our lesson, from our explanation. Okay? Ito mga values na ito, minsan hindi natin sila inaasahan. Minsan, okay, kailangan nating i-address siya in a more spontaneous manner. Okay? And at the same time, hindi lang yung mga effective, domain, uh, effective learning competency na nakalagay sa lesson plan mo yung dapat mo ituro. If the needs arise, it must be 
um the teachers must address those needs in a more um dynamic manner rather than just staying in what is the stated objective of your lesson now as you can see here there is a disparity kasi sa cognitive sa cognitive learning competency sabi nila stick ka lang dapat sa objectives mo pero bakit sa affective domain hindi okay kailangan daw meron ka pa ring freedom because again a lot of emotions a lot of situations can rise up from the classroom um wherein the stu the teacher and the, even the students themselves do not really expect this uh, situations okay and of course yeah the needs um if they go up they go up okay so number table two here okay this shows you again another um representation of Catwell's taxonomy of effective domain this time from navarro and santos because we're going to look at the um, learning competencies here in the example side now uh as you see here in the second column hindi ko ma-highlight na second column lang i apologize okay the first column is the level the second column is the definition which we have talked about earlier so focus tayo dito sa example under receiving sabi ni navarro and santos example would be an individual reading a book or passage about civil rights so bakit ito na nasa receiving because sabi natin receiving is the sensitivity of the existence of an event Okay? So, kapag binasa mo yung isang bagay, you are already aware of its existence. Okay? So, that's why ang example na to ay nakapasok lamang sa receiving. Number one. So, uh, as you can see, pagkakatuloy-tuloy po yung continuity nito. Pag pupunta ka na sa responding, okay, sino pa rin saan ito? Sabi nila, the students should now be able to answer the questions in the book and read another book about the same author by the same author or another book about civil rights etc etc this is when a student responds to what they have read when they show the initiative to look for more to have a more complete understanding okay or perhaps just to give their particular opinion on a topic so for the third level, the valuing, sabi dito, the individual may demonstrate this by voluntarily attending a lecture on civil rights. The root word here is voluntarily. Because if you volunteer to do a particular activity, it means you value that activity. If a student is forced to volunteer, do you see valuing there? No. Kasi baka pag forced yan, mapunta lang yan sa receiving. Yung makikita niya lang yung existence. Pero, if it is voluntary, it means there is at least a base level of interest there. A base level of the valuing given by the students. Now, the organizing, the individual might arrange a civil rights rally. Okay, this escalated a bit quickly or, uh, for me. Sabi ni Navarro and Santos, it daw yung under organization. Because at this phase, you see na nag organize na yung bata. Okay, bakit? Because people, kahit pare-pareho yung kanilang um, pinaka-main reason to go to the civil rights rally, their value is still different. When you interact with people, you inherently organize values. Whenever you get new opinions from people, you organize those opinions in, in relation to your already formed perspective. Okay, in accordance to your already formed personality. Kaya ka nag-organize whenever you get new information. And nakakakuha ka ng new information when you interact with other people. Okay? Next. So the final level, according to Navarra and Santos, is this is when the individual is firmly committed to the value, perhaps becoming a civil rights leader. Okay, so dito, syempre, pag may civil rights leader ka, nakita na nila yung iyong consistent na value. Okay, so at this juncture, you will see that, of course, the word there is being committed, being consistent to a particular cause. So that is characterization or interna uh, internalization. When the value becomes your personality, it becomes your character that stays consistent 
throughout your uh, living days okay so that is just a quick example on how um different levels okay or different um learning competencies can be under each level of the crat walls effective domain okay what's important to understand here is that when you receive you simply invive a sense of knowing okay para siyang knowledge doon sa bloom's taxonomy when you respond this is when you get something from the students not necessarily um their values but their opinions so yung pinaka baseline yung opinions what can they say in with what they learned etc okay and then this is followed by values when the students show a particular attachment to a lesson so organization again this is when the student is um involved in a group when they brainstorm most likely or when they are exposed to different opinions from one another wherein they battle it out they debate it out so that they form a consistent set of values and characterization is when a value when an attitude when a trait becomes your character okay now let me note this here according to Navarro and Santos um, ang effective domain ginagamit lang to describe the learner's characteristics and it cannot be used as grades okay so ito yung isa sa mga weaknesses ng um, effective domain. Alam natin na importante siya, pero hindi natin siya pwedeng isama sa grade. Hindi, pwede, hindi porket yung bata ay bastos. Hindi ka pwedeng maglagay ng minus doon sa grades niya that are simply based on their summative performances. Okay? Meron part ng card dyan, yung sa character development nila or yung character nila. But when it comes to grades, something na... Um, binibigyan natin ng halaga hindi mo pwedeng galawin yung grade nila simply because uh, the student has undesirable traits okay there is also the difficulty in setting effective uh, objectives compared to cognitive objectives because again effective qualities are internally manifested thus hardly observable what does this mean it means yung value, yung honesty, yung grit, yung perseverance, yung motivation, yung interest, hindi mo nakikita yan inherently. Okay? Those things, yung estudyante na maaaring poker face ng sa klase mo, they might feel interest. Hindi lang nila pinapakita through their physical means. And yung student na sa tingin mo ay sobrang interested sa'yo, nagpapakita ang tao lang pala kasi nasa first row siya. That's problematic but it happens in the classroom okay kaya alam ko pag ngumingiti kayo sa akin eh okay hinuhulaan ko kung natutuwa ba kayo or sadyang uh, papakita ang taulan to the first row and then anyway um since it can be hard to set um learning competencies in the affective domain nagrecommend si Navarro and Santos na mga verbs then na pwede natin gamitin under each level in the affective domain. So, sa sabi nila, sa receiving, pwede kang gumamit na accept, attend, develop, recognize. Okay? Yung attend, hindi ko gaano ma-imagine. Okay? Perhaps attend to um, the needs. Sure. But yung accept kasi, minsan maaaring sa responding din yan. Yung develop, that's easier. For example, um, develop awareness for ganito, ganyan. Okay, recognize the needs of ganito, ganyan. Okay, so that is under receiving. For responding, you have complete, comply, discuss, operate, obey, respond, etc., etc. And then for valuing, you have this particular verbs, okay? So uh, defend the opinion of uh, Abraham Lincoln on the freedom of the slaves, okay? For example, like that. Uh, defend the, what do you call this? Defend the stand on the legality against and for um abortion okay so that's an example now so organization you have order organized systemized way okay weigh the importance of responsibility versus freedom in a democratic society okay so systemize the particular um 
information based on how important they are to you. Okay? Pwede papasok yun sa organization. And then you have characterization which is internalize and verify. Okay? So, ang beginning ko pa example dito here. Students should be able to recognize the feelings of empathy by describing the hardships endured by the characters in the story using less than 100 words and in impromptu. OMG. Diba? Ababa. Ano pa ibig sabihin nun? Okay. Again, when we're talking about effective um, domain or the effective targets, they are not to be included in the grade, ha? Okay. So, Pero it must still be specific, short-term, measurable, and uh, observable. Okay? So ito po, is it specific? Yes. Because you're focusing on the story and then you're focusing on the feelings of empathy. So hanggang anong level ito? Ito po, ipapasok lamang sa receiving. Because you're only recognizing the feelings of empathy. Okay? You're not asking your students on how a character can be adapted in the real life you're not asking them if the actions that the character made is justifiable or not you're only asking them to recognize feelings of empathy so this is only under receiving okay is it observable yes kasi meron kang um meron kang impromptu speech na maaari mong makita okay so that's how you make uh, effective learning uh, competencies in the classroom. So hindi man siya smart, okay? May sinusunod pa rin siyang mga rules, okay? Na closely related sa smart principle. So hopefully pag gagawa kayo ng um, effective learning targets, hindi sa sabihin students must show honesty towards the lesson. Okay, huwag pong ganong uri ng objective kasi sobra naman pong general nun. Diba? Walang patutunguhan and hindi siya measurable which is very, very problematic. Okay? So now, uh, let's move on to the focal concepts of the effective learning. So according to Navarro and Santo, sabi nila, there is a need to define the important terms in the affective domain. Okay? For example, when they say attitude, ang definition nila to is a mental predisposition to act that is expressed by evaluating a particular entity with some degree of favor or disfavor. Ang weird, ano? So, when they say attitude, sa mga research, this is usually pinapakita if you are for a particular aspect or not for a particular aspect. For example, attitudes towards um, monogamy. Attitudes towards polygamy, attitudes towards the current administration. So usually, nakita mo yan into a positive versus a negative light. Ganun pin definition nila ng attitude, a mental predisposition to act. Okay? So, ang iba pang mga um, concept na kailangan mo makita is that ang attitude ay napakalaki po niyan. Okay? So, si Navarro and Santos, dinivide po siya into four components. These components are cognition, affect, behavioral intentions, and evaluation. So let's talk about all of this. So first we have cognition. Sabi nila, according to Navarro and Santos themselves, cognitions are our beliefs, theories, ex expectancies, cause and effect beliefs, and perceptions relative to the focal object. Basically, these are our knowledge towards a particular idea. For example, um, what is divorce? This is um, basically invalidating a marriage. What is abortion? This is the uh, forceful, forceful act of eliminating a children inside um, a mother or a child or a fetus. Okay, what is a fetus? A fetus is, uh, what do you call this? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So, all of those things are under cognition. Yung pagkakaalam mo, mga theories na nakuha mo, that is related to a certain object. Okay? Mga theories pa lang to, purely knowledge po ito. Kung ano lang yung alam mo, mga lahat ng information na nakuha mo towards an object, that falls under your cognition. When you say affect, these are the feelings you feel toward a focal object. Feelings as love, fear, mercy, anger, hate, etc., etc. For example, 
Oh, when I see uh, ch children asking for alms, I feel anger. Why? Because these kids have parents. Parents that are irresponsible enough to have their children roam the streets. Para sa akin yun. Okay? Whenever I see old people begging for alms, I feel sad. Because I do not know what they did. But they are old. They are weak. They are experiencing pain. And then for them to have no one else to turn to, it feels sad for me. Okay? So those are my affect. What I feel when I see a particular scenario. Okay? And then you have behavioral intentions. The goal, aspiration, and predispose responses towards the attitude. So, ano naman po ito? Ito po yung mga goals in our relation to the particular object. For example, okay, um, our behavioral intentions toward the government. Okay? For me, I'm a person. Okay? Uh, that belongs to a community. And I, of course, I want the community to prosper. So what are my behavioral intentions towards the administration? So for those, for their actions that I believe are just, I will wholeheartedly support them. Whenever I see things that can be um, indicted in corruption, I tend to call it out. Okay? Whenever, uh, for example, naman, titignan tayo sa monogamy. This is the act of having one lover. Of course, this is something that I would like. Okay? Because somehow, I'm a bit selfish. When we look at the idea of world hunger, for example, I want to eliminate it. Because I believe people should have enough to eat for their everyday lives. When we talk about poverty, I know that it is not possible to eliminate it. Why? Because there is are limited resources in the world. Yung pagkakaalam ko na limited resources in the world, that is cognition. What do I feel towards it? I feel helpless. That's my effect. What do I plan to do about it? If I could, I wanted to eradicate it. Behavioral intentions and then evaluation. An evaluation. This is the central piece of our attitude, which consists of the accusations on the attitude, whether it be good or bad. Okay? So, what's this? So, for example, yung world hunger. Okay? I see it as bad. Why? Because I know a lot of people waste food. A lot of people do not have food. That's my cognition. I feel bad about it. Okay? I feel sad about it. I want to eradicate world hunger. Behavioral intention. What's my evaluation? World hunger is bad because people, uh, because there is a imbalance allocation of resources. Okay? So, yun yung tingin ko, yun yung aking evaluation when it comes to world hunger. Okay? Always remember, cognition, yung lahat ng knowledge mo, alam mo, towards a particular scenario. Affect is what you feel towards a scenario. Behavioral intention is what you plan to do. What's your goal? What's your aspiration or predispositions towards the object or scenario? And evaluation, this is your judgment of whether something, the scenario, is good or bad. Okay? Now, so, ang sabi dito ni Kwan, ni Shaw in 2002, okay, evaluation is stored in memory if even if it's not accompanied by effect or cognitions responsible for creating such evaluation. So, pwede ka magkaroon ng evaluation sa isang bagay regardless kung meron kang effect or cognition towards it. For example, um, murder. Murder is a general idea. Okay? So, wala kong Cognition doon. Why? Because murder is very broad. Ang alam ko lang, murder is basically killing someone else. Okay? Affect. What do I feel about murder? Depends on the murder. Okay? But, I can evaluate if it's good or bad. Is murder good? Um, I don't know. Is murder bad? Uh, yes. Weird, no? Um, 
Because murder, according to the Bible, is bad. Thou shalt not kill others. Diba? But I have to um add my sense of personality here. When I say that murder is um debatable at best. Okay? In the Bible, it's bad. In other contexts, in uh, very philosophical contexts and debatable concepts, some may say it can be good. But my evaluation is, it's neither good nor bad. Okay? I do not have the effect. I do not have the cognition. But I have the evaluation. Okay? So, those are the four components of attitude according to Navarro and Santos. So, I hope I gave a lot of examples na kaya-kaya niyo paghiwa-hiwalayan yan pag pinaghalo-halo ko na ulit. Okay? So, kahit galay man to, ano, in 2014, okay, we're able to retrieve uh, the affective traits that they asserted, as they asserted, that the affective domain is not only about emotions and feelings, but a lot of other things that are added as non-cognitive traits. So, ang non-cognitive traits, actually may publication si uh, Macmillan in 2017 na hinighlight niya yung iba't ibang uri ng mga non-cognitive traits na papasok sa ating affective domain. So, una-una, of course, yung attitude, which we have just um, talked about earlier. This is when we are in favor or not in favor of a particular idea. Okay? And then, the next one, you have interest. When you say interest, this is your preference for a certain kind of object. For example, I am interested in coffee. You might be interested in K-pop. Others might be interested in um, Germany. Okay? So, tayo, may iba ba tayong interests? The next, you have values. The importance, uh, worth, or usefulness of modes or conducts and end states of existence. Ang crop yung lolib. Ano ba ibig sabihin nito? When we say values, these are the things. These are um, our manifestations of what we value in our everyday lives. For example, all of us value money. But not all of us value money over love. Some of us value coffee. Others value um other things. Others, sabi nila, di ba? Okay lang kahit may red flag siyang ganito kasi marami naman siyang green flag. Ibig sabihin, binavalue nila yung green flag over sa red flag. Okay? Some value others. Ay, sorry. Some value um, honesty. Some value integrity. Some value being cunning. Etc. Etc. Then you have self-monitoring. This is your awareness of being on track, on task, and evaluating work. Okay? So, when you, we say self-monitoring, this is when you monitor your own self. Are you going out of your own personality? Are you going out of your own comfort zone? Are you being productive? Diba? At the end of the day, pagkatapos natin magtamad uh, buong araw, minsan mag, maninibog po tayo. We, <laughs> we feel sad kasi sabi natin, ay, parang wala akong nagawa today. Okay? Because we are self-monitoring. Okay? Then you have integrity. This is honesty and truthfulness in one's action. Now, pwede natin masabi na value din ito. But when we say integrity, this is being true. Being honest. Um, to oneself and to others. Okay? For example, pinapakita mo sa iba that you value love. Pero sa totoo naman, you don't value it. Diba? Then, it means you value something else. There you have values, but you do not have integrity. Diba? So that's a difference when it comes to talking about integrity and your values. Then next, we have motivation. This is our willingness to be engaged in a particular activity. So iba sa atin motivated to play. Iba motivated to learn. Iba motivated to talk. Iba motivated to sleep. And all these different things... Okay? Meron tayo iba-ibang motivation sa bawat actions na iyan. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng i-general ang motivation. Motivation is specific. Is specific. Okay? Maybe we are motivated to learn algebra. Maybe some of us are motivated to learn poetry. Okay? So, magkakaiba-iba po tayo ng motivation. Then next, you have self-efficacy. This is your perception on the kapa, uh, on capabilities to learn. This is your understanding of yourself 
on the things that you can do, the things that you can learn how to do. For example, I have high self-efficacy when it comes to higher mathematics. I believe that I can learn higher mathematics. Therefore, I have self-efficacy. But I do not believe I can learn drawing. Meaning, mababay self-efficacy ko when it comes to drawing. Because I'm not good at drawing. Okay? The next, you have self-esteem. This is your self-concept, a degree of self-respect, or basically, yung pagpapahalaga mo na lang sa sarili mo. Okay? How you treat yourself. Di ba sabi nga nila, ang isa sa mga trends ngayon when it comes to this life is self-love, self-care. That is because we are we want to improve our self-esteem. Because some students have low self-esteem, they might lead to self-harm. Okay? They might lead to low confidence. Okay? These things can impair our connections with the society. And then you have adaptability. Okay? Adaptability is one of the 21st century skills that is very important in today's society. Kasi napakaraming pagbabago. Not only in your workplace, but in your everyday life. Kaya po dapat tayo ay adaptable to a wide range of situations. Okay? And then you have interpersonal relationships okay one of the more interesting things when it comes to the newer generation is this some people can function without interpersonal uh, relationships but we have to ask kasi yung ah, what do you call this yung interpersonal relationship that's traditionally face to face but now we have online friends we have online interactions we have online capabilities to have interpersonal relationships without physical connection which can be um a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you search it okay but then again people who do not get along with others will have a hard time living uh living in this particular society why because um sa sobrang connected ng ating society ngayon okay pagbibili ka or when you get something to eat sometimes you buy online papadala sa iyo tapos maging mabait ka sa tao when you work you work in a part of a team you cannot only do things by yourself so it would lead you to have interpersonal connections with others because you cannot do things alone yung mga tasks natin sobrang complex na na hindi na pwedeng gawin siya mag-isa okay next is altruism altruism is the willingness or propensity to help others okay this is when you feel better this is when you uh when you have motivations to help others in their trying times okay so that's altruism Okay, then you have perseverance. Okay, perseverance is the willingness to continue despite of difficulties and barriers. Okay, so kahit nahihirapan ka, kahit nagkamali ka on the first try, when you try again, okay, that is perseverance. Okay, just let's just uh, make sure now when we try again, we do something new with our try, diba? Or there is um, incremental improvements sa ating bawat try. Hindi pwedeng try lang tayo ng try, tapos wala namang nababago. Okay? Kasi po hindi na perseverance yun. That is um, a bit stupidity. Okay? Pag walang nagbabago. But nonetheless, if there's something changing, just do it over and over. Maybe it will um, fully change, you know? Now, ang grit is also perseverance. Ang pagkaiba lang, Perseverance is more short term. Okay? For example, nagkamali ako sa isang drawing. Dahil required yun, kailangan ko subukan ulit. Ayoko sumuko dahil grade yun. Okay? That's perseverance. When I say grit, I look at the long term goals. Bakit ba ako nagdrawing? Ah, kasi requirement sa subject. Ah, hindi ko pwedeng sukuan to. Kasi pag bumagsak ako sa subject na ito, okay, kailangan ko ulitin ulit. Pag inuray ko ulit, madidelay ako sa college. Pag nadali ako sa college, gastos na naman. Wala kaming ganun pa uring panggastos. Okay? Kahit anong hirap, di ba? Di ba? Oh, naflatan yung gulong mo. Okay. Pwede kang maging perseverance. Susubukan mo ulit. Um, titignan mo yung mga resources on your way. Di ba? But great is focusing on the long-term goals. Okay? I need to get this fixed because I need to get somewhere. Okay? I need to get back home. Okay? So, that is grit. 
focusing more on the long-term goals kahit meron ka maraming challenges and obstacles. Again, perseverance is short-term. Grit is more on the long-term focus. Long-term focus on your goals. Okay? So, again, it's already, th ter it's already 30 minutes. So, those are the different um, competencies when it comes to the effective learning. Okay? So, again, dapat po specific measurable, observable, and short-term yung ating effective learning competencies. So, kahit pa paano sinusunod niya pa rin yung smart model na ginagamit natin sa cognitive and psychomotor domains of learning. And that we must understand that attitude is the main focus of the effective domain. And attitudes are divided into four parts. Cognitions, which is all of the knowledge that you know, on a particular thing, affect yung nararamdaman mo regarding that particular object, behavioral intentions, your intentions regarding the said object, and then how you view the object, which is under evaluation. It's if it's either good or bad. And of course, we do not forget na hindi lang attitudes yung kasama sa affective domain. Kasama alus lahat ng non-cognitive traits which are listed by Macmillan in table number 3. Okay? So again, that's all for the recording and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!